The Texas Blackland Prairie. It stretches from the Red River to the city of San Antonio and covers more than 19,000 square miles. Historically, this was a land of wildflowers and grasses, such as blue still, gamma grass, and Indian grass. Periodic fire suppressed dense woody vegetation and allowed tall grasses to flourish. Here, on the prairie, millions of bison and antelope grazed. There are pioneers that wrote in their diaries as they crossed the Blackland Prairies, this sea of grass, rolling, gently rolling hills of grass and wildflowers, and they describe it as one of the most beautiful landscapes they'd ever seen. Keep in mind, many of them came from Europe, which were forested systems, they, and they were calling these grassland habitats extremely beautiful. So it was a landscape that was wide open, a landscape that was seemingly boundless. But as new settlers discovered the beauty of Texas, they also found that the rich soil of the Blackland Prairie was ripe for cultivation. Gradually, the diverse grasslands began a conversion to farmland, and the age of agriculture had arrived. Crops like cotton, corn, and milo were big business in Texas. The Blackland Prairie has extremely fertile soil, very deep, very rich in organic matter. These prairies being converted to plowed fields and grazing pastures. As a result of that change, there were introduced species being brought in like Johnson grass, coastal Bermuda. One of the major challenges for managing a Blackland Prairie is managing these species to keep them from taking over. Today, the Blackland Prairie is one of the most severely altered in the state. Much of the farmland of the past has yielded to the continuing sprawl from our cities as urban development now takes up a majority of this ecoregion. Sadly, only 1% of native Blackland Prairie habitat remains. The Blackland Prairie in its history has suffered several different phases of major impacts. The first being agriculture and the second being what we're seeing today, which is residential development, commercial development, and this vast wave of urbanization that seems to be taking over the state. You don't really see effective and efficient use of land area until you have constraints on land area. If you think about Manhattan Island, it's limited, it's an island. And so they had no way to go out, so they had to go up. In Texas, there's this mentality that we can keep going out forever. So what we're seeing is, urbanization just sprawling out all over the, uh, the habitats surrounding our urban areas. Along with the rapid population growth and urban sprawl, a host of land use practices are also changing in the Blackland Prairie. Improper livestock grazing, fencing, reservoirs and dams, as well as invasive plants and animals. It's no longer the prairies and the cross timbers that we knew 200 years ago. It's now a mix of exotic species. It's a mix of mowed grasses. So the habitat is changing and wildlife species are changing with it as well. One such scenario of change is the decline of grassland nesting birds like the dick sissel. They make their nests in clumps of bunch grass native to the Blackland Prairie. The grassland nesting birds are experiencing a precipitous decline and what we mean by that is they're declining really, really fast. The dick sissel is a little grassland nesting bird. It nests nowhere else but in grasses. It likes to nest down in the very center of the clumps of grasses and can exist very well in a grazing regime. But if we change to coastal Bermuda grass, they don't have that clump in which to nest, so they're unable to form their nest um, in the same way that they would in a native grassland. So even though they might try to nest there because there's nowhere else to go, uh, very often their nests fail. So what's happening with the dick sissel is happening throughout the state as habitat fragmentation increases, as land use patterns change, as grazing regimes become more intense. We see these same sort of patterns happening throughout the state with other species. Everything is interconnected. When the diversity of plants decline, so does the diversity of wildlife. There is only a small amount of public private and non-profit conservation land currently operated under wildlife management plans. This is why continued public awareness of good land management is critical to conserve our native Texas. 
Texas Parks and Wildlife and many of its partners offer guidance for landowners to help improve agricultural practices. They also conduct education and encourage policies that limit negative development impacts like erosion and landscape fragmentation. There is an urgent need to restore our remnant prairies and to protect the remaining quality habitat within the Blackland Prairie. An effort that will require the help of all Texans.